No os preocupéis, ¿vale? Porque el vídeo está en inglés, es decir, no vais a tener que leer subtítulos después de esta introducción, ¿vale? Bien. ¿Qué pasa, chavales? ¿Qué tal todo? Bueno, feliz año, feliz 2022. Entonces, ¿quién es esta persona con la que tengo esta llamada? Él es Anthony. Nos conocimos a raíz del vídeo este que subí, subí sobre mi depresión y tal. Bueno, es un vídeo con el que no quiero hablar mucho, pero... <risa> Oye, es un vídeo que ha ayudado a algunas personas. O sea, les ha venido bien al saber que ellos no son las únicas personas que han pasado o están pasando por eso. Así que eso se va a quedar ahí, por mucho que odie ese vídeo. Bueno, el tema, entonces... Él me contactó porque, entre otras muchas cosas, es psicólogo, entonces él me quería echar una mano. Y bueno, hablando y tal, eh, me ayudó y bueno, hicimos buenas, buenas migas. Y resulta que Anthony conocía a Cid antes de, de ser Cid, más o menos. Es decir, no le conoció en persona, le conoció a través de las redes y bueno, más que conocer, digamos que siguió los pasos y creo que sí que llegó a, a entablar conversación con él por las redes. Y además recuerda, recuerda bastante bien cómo fue la transformación de Cid, o al menos obviamente lo que él dejaba ver a través de las redes. Lo que os digo, no le conoció en persona, fue todo a través de, de internet. Yo a Anthony le dije, tío, llevo pensando un tiempo hacer un vídeo sobre, sobre la muerte de Cid. Como os podéis imaginar, yo para hacer mis vídeos que estuve haciendo empezando en 2012, yo tenía que recopilar mucha información sobre Cid. Mensajes, imágenes, vídeos, es decir, tuve que ver mucho. Y no solo eso, sino que para hacer mi último vídeo que hice, el canal del hermano de Final, que se llama Final Tier, tuve que, bueno, tuve acceso a, a todos los vídeos personales últimos de, de Cid. Yo una cosa que vi fue un declive en la energía y felicidad de, de Cid. Ahora, yo iba a hacer un vídeo en el que iba a hablar un poco de cómo yo pensaba que igual esta persona estaba cayendo en una pequeña depresión y cómo eso pudo haber influido en su muerte. En ningún momento pensé que Cid se hubiera podido suicidar voluntariamente, pero bueno, no sería el primer caso ni será el último de un famoso que empieza a tomar sustancias una noche solo en su habitación para inhibirse y eso va escalando, escalando hasta que llega un punto de no retorno en el que acaba con esa persona famosa en su habitación hallada inconsciente o muerta. Entonces, bueno, ¿qué vais a ver? Vais a ver la perspectiva que tiene Anthony desde sus conocimientos y según lo que él ha visto y cómo él lo cree. Yo creo que es una visión muy acertada y creo que os va a gustar oírla. One of the main reasons I got so pissed off when I saw Conor Murphy's video claiming Ziz committed suicide because of bad nature. He's trying to really enforce that Ziz was completely all about looks and appearance and nothing else mattered. That is just so far from the truth, not what he was about. Yeah, it makes sense, but it's not the truth. If you don't know anything about it, and Connor Murphy's very convincing with how he explains it, yeah, it sounds legitimate. Maybe it was because Connor Murphy was actually projecting himself, because I think that's what oh, happened yeah, to him. Yeah. Trust me, that Connor Murphy video is all projection. Absolutely. As a psychologist, but also having known Ziz and then seeing when Connor Murphy first came on the scene and firstly how he was like riding on his success and then once he got success himself, he turned on it and it was just full on putting shit on Ziz. I mean, Connor Murphy was literally like the opposite of Ziz. He, he was putting shit on Ziz to try and raise himself up. When he first came out, that's what he was doing. You remember that I actually thought to some degree he had committed suicide, not voluntarily, that it was because of different factors, maybe the nose job. He was feeling a bit depressed because of what I have told you. But you told me that, that it wasn't suicide. Firstly, you know, I can't recall exactly what he was taking, but, but certainly some of the steroids he was taking can affect your mood. Firstly, if you're dieting in a way to get shredded or stay shredded, it's really, really stressful. This is why, you know, bodybuilders, especially professional bodybuilders are, are like pissed off all the time. People say it's the steroids, it's the steroids. Most of the time it's the diet. If you're eating nothing but, you know, chicken and white fish and broccoli every day for like six months, you're not going to be a happy person because it drives you nuts. There are a lot of things that can affect your, your basic mood for a start. He was doing all of the Ziz stuff and all the exercise stuff, as well as working part-time job, as well as doing his business degree at university. So he had a lot of fundamental stress and he's extremely busy. On top of that, he was studying his own business. On top of that, he had all the attention, obviously, from women. On top of that, he had countless people wanting to be his friend and then there's some troubles he had you know with with oh, i'm going to too much but you know with, with with some people close to him when i was talking to him in facebook messenger before he went to thailand what he was talking about he needed to get away from people and he just needed a break from not just a break from the ziz thing but just a break from everything to go from australia to thailand it's not some something people usually do by themselves. You usually go with at least one other person or you go with a group but he was just that determined to get away just spend the time alone 
just away from people and to de-stress. Maybe he did use a lot of drugs there, and I mean, he probably did use some, but that's not why he went. And then, yeah, there's the surgery on the nose as well. The surgery went wrong, and we don't know if it did or not. Connor Murphy, I think, is the only person saying that the surgery went wrong. No one else has said to be fair, a nose job is a pretty basic, simple, common operation. I mean, it's a bit hard to imagine how it could be messed up. Mm-hmm. But even if it was, it's certainly easy to correct. He wasn't short of money. He certainly, having it redone in Thailand, if that was necessarily necessary, wouldn't have been an expensive thing to do. Certainly mm-hmm. no reason for him to be suicidal. And his personality as well, he was just such a positive, driven person. He had so much positivity in his life. He, he, he was just about to graduate from university with his business degree. He had his business he'd started with the the, the protein powders and, and, and uh, the clothing. And he had other things in the pipeline. He was growing in popularity. He had so much going for him and so much to look forward to. Again, this is another reason to go to Thailand and have the break. He needed a break to just, not just de-stress, but reset and, and get focused. He was also reassessing what he was gonna do with, you know, with the Ziz character and the Ziz persona i think he was going to tone it down a bit i mean that's the way what we talked about in messenger but even i think he posted some stuff on facebook and, and that himself that he was sort of going to tone it down a bit yeah, how do you think then someone i mean he fell he fell asleep getting a massage yeah well from the medical side he he, he played he played soccer and skateboard and, and whatnot when he was younger but certainly what we can see from the videos and things he did have problems with his fitness he did very little or no cardio training in the gym, certainly. There are very few videos of him dancing where he danced for any longer than like 10 or 15 seconds and he'd get gassed really quickly. You know, he'd dance and then he'd be clearly exhausted. I mean, dancing can be a pretty exhausting thing, but he really got exhausted very quickly. And then we know that he had sleep apnea. I've seen people comment on that, people who were close to him and around him comment on that. I mean, the video of him when he's getting a tattoos and he's, he's unconscious, but the way he was breathing quite clearly was not natural. I don't know if he was asthmatic or whether he had asthma. This is a little bit of an assumption, but but if listening to the way how he talks and his voice and the the nasally voice, the way his voice sounds is very typical for people who have asthma. So that's another possibility. So again, these are all pointing towards breathing issues. He might not have had asthma per se, but certainly reactions from other things could have created an asthmatic type. As far as steroids being the cause of his death, I don't agree with that. You know, bodybuilders and people who die from steroid use, most of the time, it's one of two things. It's either hypertrophy, where the left ventricle of their heart is enlarged, and it's, it's the heart's no longer able to, to pump the blood efficiently and essentially gets blocked. That takes at least five or six years for that to happen. It's not something that you can do a couple of, you know, steroid cycles and suddenly you've got an enlarged heart. It takes quite a long time. And it's not just the steroids, it's the workload. If we look at the videos of Ziz training, most of the time he wasn't lifting super, super heavy weights, which is really one of the things that also is sort of, you know, necessary for this en- enlarged heart. Also his age, I think he was, t- again, too young. He, he's, he's a resistance to that sort of thing. He'd be a lot stronger than older guys. So anyway, to me, from my understanding of physiology, and I've got a degree in physiology, there wasn't enough time for that sort of condition to develop. The other thing that's a common steroid-related cause of death is a lot of uh, plaque buildup in the arteries. But again, that comes from years of heavy steroid use and consuming insane amounts of food. See, this is not another thing too, with these guys that have heart failure, etc., from steroid use. These guys are huge. They're like way, way heavier than they would be naturally, and they're eating insane amounts of food. Ziz wasn't that big. I believe he could have got that big naturally. It just would have taken a lot longer. But when I look at him, you know, if he trained long enough, he could have got that big or close to that big naturally just obviously he wanted to do it a lot faster so that's why he used the steroids he was what six foot one and he was walking around at like 85 kilograms 90 kilograms that's not ridiculously huge at all for his height i don't believe that steroids caused the death but certainly side effects of steroids are also things like higher blood pressure now if he had a heart condition this is more a possibility that he had higher blood pressure but the main culprit i believe honestly is the clenbuterol use which clenbuterol is not a 
of steroid, it's a stimulant to burn extra fat. Clambuterol, depending on how much you use, raises your metabolism by 10 to as much as 20%, depending on how much you use. It does that by raising your heart rate. Even your resting heart rate can go up like 20 beats a minute. And again, that also raises your blood pressure. And he was using it a lot and he's using it constantly. So I think, agree that the clambuterol was a higher risk thing than the steroids. So I've got a combination of things there. A heart condition, even a mild heart condition, if he's you know using clambuterol for months and months and months on end, then on top of that, yeah, you know, he's using steroids. Occasionally, sure, using you know recreational drugs and stuff as well. If he's in Thailand and it's a lot more humid and hot than he's used to, I mean, humidity also it makes it harder to breathe. How likely do you see he basically fell asleep? Um, probably because of the painkillers that he was using after the surgery. And what well, that's was- that's the thing too. Again, we we know he had sleep apnea. He had he had breathing issues when he was asleep. Then, if he's got a weakened heart. And then we have, you know, the years of using the clambuterol and to a degree the steroids on top of that. Then he's in Thailand where it's very, very humid and the air is very heavy. And then depending on what painkillers he has in his system, you know, quite often they are going to slow the heart rate down uh, and they can affect your breathing as well. It's just a combination of things, I think. People can drink too much alcohol and fall asleep and not wake up. There are a few famous rock stars that have died from that. I mean, to be honest, again, this is speculation, but I think he was smart enough to not take party drugs if he's full of painkillers and anesthetics and stuff from a nose surgery. So, yeah, it, it makes sense to me that he that he could quite possibly pass away like that. I, I don't see anything fishy about that story at all it, it makes a lot more sense to me than the claim that he committed suicide that that's just ridiculous knowing his personality and what he was like and look at his life he was such a positive motivated person you know he, he gained self-confidence and charisma before he became Ziz he was the ducks of his school he was the smartest kid near his school he excelled academically he excelled at many things he was popular both the array of community and he was popular online he had all these things going for him I've worked with many suicidal people don't know what their personality traits are like he didn't exhibit any of those he was too much of a rational thinker he wasn't an emotional thinker he wasn't prone to depression if he was someone who was suffering from severe depression then it's a possibility but he definitely he wasn't suffering from depression he was doing so many extreme things in public it wasn't just online he'd go to raves he'd go to parties yeah. people would see him he'd just go out in the city people would come to him constantly wanted to take photos with him he was working as a stripper as well now if he was suffering from depression or mentally weak in that manner there's no, no, there's way. no way there is no way there's no way he could do that it's just there's no way you can't just handle that <clears throat> yeah huh. I know from my own experience. You can't fake it, you can't handle it. It's the opposite. Even strong people, that's pretty hard. It's, It's actually admirable that he could handle so much.